Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Great Locks. I'm Gunther the Great and today we're continuing the series of Beyond the Roots. This is the part two of the first episode. This is called The Fade and this is basically just more in depth on not only like his hairstyle or why he chose it, but really in depth kind of just conversating about life in general along with, I guess, like, you know, the hairstyle and dreadlocks and how they parallel with life. But then again, just, uh, you know, talking. So like I said, this is part two of the first episode. We have Activerse or Yudidia Tedessa on today's episode again. Super stoked to have them. You guys enjoyed the first episode. Thanks so much for watching. You guys really have shown so much love. And you guys, you said you, said you wanted longer episodes, so we'll try to extend this one out and not do too many edits. Keep it very raw and uncut and real. This is like number one thing we're gonna do is keep it real. So without further ado, we're just gonna jump straight into it. I'm gonna be giving Diddy a high top fade. Is that cool? Yes, sir. So we're doing a high top fade. The reason we're giving fades is because it's actually, today we're going to a graduation banquet. We're actually graduating tomorrow. Hey. College together is crazy, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. We're graduating college. Yeah, but, we just knew each other like three years ago. Yeah, so it's cool that like we barely met not too long ago. You guys don't do Nate, this is do Nate's brother. And um, it's cool how our relationship has grown as friends and uh, see that we're actually graduating together. My wife is actually graduating with us as well. So it's really cool to see all that stuff going down. But it is back to school. And so we're in the spirit of back to school. <laughs> but um, I don't, are you are you in it to get your doctorate as well? Yeah, I'm in it too. So, so we do have about like six years left. But yeah. We're in it for the long haul. Anyway, let's jump straight in. I'm gonna start out with my first guideline on cutting his hair. I'm not gonna go in depth on the haircut. We're just gonna be conversating, keeping it, I guess, very raw and uncut. But speaking about my first guideline, bro, what would you say, because I know for everyone it's different mm -hmm. and us being, you know, who we are, not, I mean, that's just in general for anybody. Mm -hmm. What would you say is, you know, your guidelines to life that, you know, keep you in check? Like recently I updated the way I structured my whole life basically. Uh, just cause I noticed the inconsistency that comes with not being consistent with your day by itself. For sure. You literally will be inconsistent. Cause I used to like, let's say for example, I used to edit for, like I used to take a one day to edit or something like that. That has like, I was like, okay, that has to be changed. I should set a time per day each day so that I can be consistent. And so that, like consistency has been my new guideline basically. Before that, I, I I wouldn't say I had like, depending on what guideline you're talking about, like it could be, okay, what's your guideline based on like spiritually, then it would yeah. be like, okay, studying. For sure. And making sure that I'm getting fed from my pastor and stuff like that, that would be my guideline. But it's like, and generally, if you ask me in generally, it would be the consistency and the time management that I actually set in place so that I can get things done throughout the day, every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's a huge thing. Uh, yeah. That's something that I dealt with, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I know just like being trying to be successful on YouTube and then seeing success in it and then just keep on going forward. It's like you see success when you're actually consistent because I mean, we were talking off camera earlier mm -hmm. that it's like, it's all about, you know, people want to see loyalty and mm -hmm. then it's like, they want to see the truth. And um, that's like a huge thing that a lot of people don't want to do mm -hmm. or, um, you know, yeah. be realistic with themselves about or with others about. It's like people want to see, you know, uh, like you being genuine with what you're doing mm -hmm. and being consistency uh, being consistent is a huge thing it's so true it's just like anybody that's like anybody can blow up off of anything as long as they're consistent with it so let's say if you talk about trees man like like not like you know, not like we yeah but like trees like let's say that's that's what you're talking about your content is on there and if you keep talking about that and you figure out more things to talk about you adventure in it and you keep on going with it, I, I believe people will start following you just because of that reason. Yeah. And you'll start just blowing because you're consistent with your content, consistent with what you're talking about sure. and the fact that you're growing in it too. People like seeing, people love seeing that. Whenever I post about my hair or any videos that I upload, they be like, dang, your hair grew so fast. Like, yeah. it's like they want to get focused on that consistency like or on that thing that that first thing got them there. Like for people like I personally, I like doing variety stuff. Yeah. But uh, as as a wise man said, uh, that you can 
have or learn a lot of things, but you're not master of everything because of that consistency reason. And it's just like, I think that's the biggest thing I would say that that will set somebody's guideline on if you want to do YouTube, if you want to do business, if you want to do school, yeah, even sure. being in school, like it's the fact that you stay consistent when you graduate, right? Yeah. It's like, and I think like, uh, it's not even like how you said, it's not even about like the content mm -hmm. and like the context. Mm -hmm. It's more like, like, what are you going to be dedicated to? Like, yeah. Or what is your, cause me and Candace talked about this yesterday too. It's like, what's the standard that you set for yourself? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think the standards that you set for yourself are harder to keep than the standards that other people have for you. Yeah. Cause like you like overlook your standards a lot of the time just because it's, you're the only one that's knowledgeable about it. That's so true. So like when it comes down to stuff that you set for yourself, like the guidelines or the standards, it's like, that's the important part. Cause God said when, um, like if you're, if you're diligent in the small things, mm -hmm. it's like, there's going to be so much more handed to you because yeah. it's like not only people are going to trust you, not only God's going to trust you, but it's like, you'll trust yourself with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going into uh, bald out all this right here. Mm -hmm. So going into bald out, I kind of want to parallel with like, um, like what's one thing that it's like, cause I know for me, there's so many things that I either had to cut off <laughs> or stop doing yeah. that I knew was either holding me back or um, the fact that I'm cutting it off is gonna launch me forward and help me out. Yeah. So I would say like for you, cause like, man, we've been like hearing your story, yeah. And like, I mean, anybody's story, it's like people go through stuff mm -hmm. and it's like people have to they cut do. people off and all these things. So like, what's the biggest thing for you that you feel you had to let go of that, you know, like helped you and propelled you forward to, you know, either get to where you are or get where you're going? Like I recently actually came to a point where like my past, our pastor was preaching about this thing called body blow. And uh, it's basically just like, it's basically people that drain you or people yeah. or even circumstances that are that you have set for yourself that don't even really matter like like it really don't matter like you can get so like let's say like i was doing a lot of things like like i said i love doing so many things at the same time yeah. and recently even uh before pastor did the message i remember candace posted about uh oh yeah about multitasking yeah and just like she like I'm multitasking a lot of things and uh, and end up not doing even, not finishing everything that I started. She said, I started cleaning the house. I started co uh, folding my laundry. Yeah. I started cooking food or something like that. And she said, she, she went back and looked at everything that she thought she was multitasking and she didn't do none of them. She didn't finish all of them. Yeah. That, that, is, that is big because as a, per as a man that you think you are sometimes, you, you feel like you're going to do everything. You can do everything. Yeah, you really can't. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm now learning it. It's like it's like a mindset that was in me for so long. Just because I am good at a lot of things that I put my mind to, I end up thinking that's what I'm supposed to do, or I can do that on the side. So yeah. I started like getting involved in a lot of things. Like one of the biggest things that I'm, but that I'm pursuing right now is is real estate, and uh, and then content creating and business, being entrepreneur basically. And being an entrepreneur is tough because you have this type, this mindset literally set. Every time you see a problem, you're trying to solve it. Yeah. But you got to know like, okay, which one are you really focused on? What are you trying to change about your life? And then later on, you get back to it. So I started cutting off those things that, that, that basically consume my time. Like I used to even serving at church. There's some things that I wasn't able to do, but I went out of my uh, my circumstance that I was in and use other people's resources to make it, to make, to accomplish it, right? And so I noticed that, okay, if I keep doing that, it's gonna keep hurting me because, and hurting others too, because I have to ask for the resource. Yeah. And also I'm going out of my way, trying to make that happen. And it's just like, it's not working for it, for me and I'm irritating the people around me. So I just said, okay, I can't do this. Just give me time till I get this situated and later on I'll help out. So one of the things that I cut was uh, just, just being on social media. <laughs> yeah, that's a big that's, thing. That's a big thing. Right no, there. like the, the only tricky part about that 
is like it can be really tricky because for me like i used to take breaks off social media all the time mm -hmm. and then i found now this is for me mm -hmm. is like i found that it's not the fact that taking a break mm -hmm. is what's making the difference really yeah it's that um it's like how do you handle you being on social media yeah, it's not right. taking a break from you know publishing and producing yeah it's taking a break from being a consumer that's good that's so good because like um i definitely agree with you yeah and um at first it took me to actually put down social media mm -hmm. and not really you know look at it but it's like when you i would say for me i social media is used as a tool, a tool yeah and um it's like if you don't ever look at it as a tool, mm -hmm. you'll constantly be be a consumer. Yeah. If it's like if you have a hammer and you don't know it's a hammer, you're just it's like there's no point. You're not becoming successful off of something that uh, like you're using. Mm hmm. That's a huge thing. That's so good, bro. Uh, I definitely agree with you. I'm, I, I was actually in constant battle between, OK, should I keep on? Yeah, take again a break, big breaks off of social media, or should I discipline myself how to use social media? Yeah, and that's two different things. That's so mm -hmm. true, and it may take one to get to the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree because it did for me. That's so good. That's so true. And the other thing that I cut off was just being available to cut people's hair. Man, that was that was just. Oh yeah, for sure. That can. That was just yeah. especially if like. Cause like you're generous, it's like you're not gonna make everyone pay. Yeah. It's like you've never made me pay. Yeah. And it's like, um, and it's not that we don't want to pay, but it's like mm -hmm. you're the generous person. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like if you're constantly pouring out into other people, yeah. And you don't fill yourself up, or you don't have that time to fill yourself up. Uh -huh. It's like sometimes you can't even recognize if you're empty. Definitely. You're empty. Um, That's good. So like, so like it's a huge thing, bro. Like I was like, yeah, I was just like. Cause I remember I used to cut everybody's hair. Everybody asked me from church. I'd be yeah. like, yeah, set up this appointment. Like I take, I go out of my way. There was times I was, I could make $40 an hour doing what I was doing. Yeah. And now I got to come home for two, three hours to wait on somebody, to cut them up, to talk to them about, you know, how you, you conversate whenever you cut hair and end up just taking about three, four hours of my day. It's like, in those four hours, I could at least make this amount of money and be more productive. You know what I'm saying? And so that that becomes to where I'm pouring out and I'm never I'm never getting poured in back to me. Nothing, no whatsoever. It's like it's okay. The twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. There's people that gave me forty dollars to cut their hair, but it's just like it came to a point where it was just like, man, I'm sacrificing a lot to be there and. I'm not being consistent with my day because now I gotta put you, I gotta fit you my schedule. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. And that's a huge thing that's too. That's so big. Because like when you have something that's flexible, mm -hmm. and it's like you don't know where to dump it at. Because there's like, there's a certain time what I would call like, uh, you know, like where you just dump the mess. Sure. Like time is of the day. Yeah. And it's like if you don't have that time sectioned out, then it's like you don't have time for someone else's mess. Yeah. So it's like if if you're working or you're busy doing something, and then someone hits you up, and I need you to do this. Yeah. It's like there should be a scheduled time for you to actually go and do that versus, all right, let me handle it right now. Then like you broke up your day. Yeah. And then now it comes into like your focus. Yeah. Now I'm just like looking at it as a smart, smarter way. Like if I'm cutting your hair, I'm making a content. Like yeah. That's yeah. the only reason I'll cut your hair. And it's like, like the people that I will offer my time would be like my leaders. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but Chase is my leader at church. And it's just like, if he needs a cut, like I'm making the time. Like it don't matter what day it is. It's just like, that's just being honorable to what is given already, right? And it's just like, there's, there's a point to where like other people might think the same way. Like, let's say, like I'm, I made a schedule yesterday with Taj, right? And yeah. like, and then, I remember uh, you was like, are you trying to do it tonight too? And I just felt bad because I told him that like way before you asked me, right? And right. so like, I made that time for him. I was yeah. like, okay, after church, we probably get done at eight or so. I got time, I gotta be by bed, like in bed at 9.30 or 10. Yeah. And so, and I was just like, I just felt bad. And it looked like almost like I made the time for him, but I wasn't able to make time for you. And, and though, although you asked me for a haircut, and it's just like, I told him later on, I was like, you gotta be careful how you say things around people sometimes because 
sometimes you don't know how the other person may feel yeah, like for it. sure like if it was a different situation like someone else that mm -hmm. you know asked for a cut yeah and it's like i understand everyone's schedule like i'm super understanding mm -hmm. and um especially when it comes to time and time management and especially if it's late like i'm not the I'm the type of person that's like, if we have to wake up at four, I'm cool with that versus staying up to one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Got to, yeah, definitely. My, I Actually, one of the things that I switched up was staying up late. Yeah, bro. And that's a big thing that I, like, honestly, that I was concerned for you about. And it's like, because <laughs> like, I know the benefit of how my life turned around when, when you, like an early riser. Yeah. And uh, like what you can accomplish in that time, because it's like we have the same amount of time in the day. Yeah, definitely. It's like you can stay up late and do your work, or you mm -hmm. can wake up early and work. But 100%. it just depends, um, like not only what kind of person you are, but like what person you want to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because it's like, the, oh, that's good. That's so you good. Know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah, if you start training yourself to the person you want to be and to the level you want to get to, that's that's good, bro. Sure. You start right now, man. And it's like, I, I didn't even look at it like that, but that's good. Yeah. But then the, the way I scheduled my stuff was actually like for uh, me going full-time in real estate and just video editing, content creating and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't even notice when I made that, but now you said that, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's big. I used to literally, I used to work all day. So, okay, this is how my schedule went, right? So Mondays, Tuesdays, I work about 12 hours each day. And then Wednesdays, I used to rest. And then Thursdays, I used to do edit, church edit, everything like that, yeah. and my video contents. And then Friday comes, bro, I wake up at around nine, and after I pray and all that, by the time I leave the house, it'll be like 12, right? Yeah. And I'll work from 12 to 4 a.m. the next day. Legit, driving all day, right? Yeah. And it was just like, it's like, and then people hit me up to get a cut on the weekend. <laughs> so I literally scheduled for people's sake on Saturday morning at 9 a.m., bro. Like wow. 9 a.m. I get four, five, six, four, hold on, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I get four to five hours sleep at minimum. There's days I slept at 6 a.m. in the morning and woke up like 10 and got, got it going again. And I went on Saturday, I literally worked the, kind of the same hours, but I try to come home early, like around 2 a.m. in the morning, but that's still not early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I have to go to church the next day. In church, you have to be to the church at 9.30, so you got to wake up at 8 in the morning. And it was just like, it became a toil almost, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to me, I was just working hard and my body felt good. like. I don't know, maybe because I'm young, but there was days that I literally slept all over my alarms and I went to church late. <laughs> and it's like, I started looking at that. I was like, okay, God, what is going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I started looking at God. I was like, okay, where's the provision at? Where does the, what is the provision for the vision at? And the whole entire time it was, it was me. <laughs> my schedule was jacked. <laughs> like <laughs> literally, bro. Yeah, I put in like, like 16 hours a day and I woke up four hours later to put another 12 hours. Even though you're putting in all this work, one thing I've noticed is like I can, what I used to do, I used to shoot, I think, there's been times where I've shot and edited like maybe 10 videos a day <laughs> at one point, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like, what am I getting accomplished at that point? <laughs> and uh, it's like, it really just comes down to overworking yourself mm -hmm. or, or toiling, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The way I believe is like, if I am gonna work these hours, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna tell myself I'm gonna work this, mm -hmm. and this is how I'm gonna run my schedule. And it's like, if you put that standard on yourself, it's mm -hmm. like, I believe from that point, God's gonna honor it and he'll bless you through it. 100%. I agree. Okay, so now I'm just blending everything, doing a little transition. And uh, it's like the biggest thing I wanna do is blend what I just did into the top or the bulk of the hair. What would you say is like your transition point mm. or um, like what's your next move and like what are you trying to accomplish? You touched on a little bit, but it's mm. like, I think one thing that a lot of people don't see or recognize and mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't promote is how they get to where they're going. Mm. So it's like, what, do you, what, are your, what are your plans and uh, like what are you going to do to get there? So right now I do, I'm self-employed with Uber and Lyft. And basically, I make my own schedule. So the reason I picked that was because I, I make my own schedule. Yeah. But I I I did that so that uh, 
my first uh, my first head was like to go to school for barbering and yeah. so this this was going to make time for it but i noticed that this really wasn't make time it wasn't really making time for it uh uh, and so even actually like the, the next transition came from this transition that I made. I used to work from uh, for uh, Fry's Electronics and I was a salesman there. So from transitioning from that to Uber and Lyft and doing it full time uh, or as a main income, I wouldn't say full time, but as a main income, uh, that helped me figure out exactly where I went ahead in my life too. Yeah. Like, like. Before that, I had some like thoughts. Okay, I want to make some music. I want to do this because I, I I love doing a lot of stuff. Like I said earlier, but it's like what is going to benefit me and the and and also where I'm headed, right? right? And I looked at it as like life was coming at me fast. I'm 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 getting engaged. Oh yeah, we even talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> and that's married. You just got engaged. All right. Oh yeah, I got engaged. Yeah, right there, you go. I got engaged. How's that? How's that going? <laughs> that, like, how's it feel? It's a good feeling, sure. I would say, because she became a help me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not a burden that I put on myself. For sure. And it's so like, oh my god, it's you. You you don't understand it till you actually go through it. Yeah, and it's like sure. when I saw her helping me out in a lot of things. That's like what's most attractive, bro. I was like, to it. you got to, you got to be married, everybody. <laughs> it's like, yeah. come on, man. I don't know how people don't want to get married. And it's just like, it's not her coming to fix everything. It's just help her coming to help and me coming to help her also. Yeah. It's like there's a lot of things that that she helps me with that which I don't want to get personal to right now. Yeah. But. It's just like, you'd be like, oh my God, I feel comfortable. Like, I feel like I have, somebody has my back. Like, sure. of course God has your back no matter what. But whenever he gives you like, the fact that he created Eve was like, okay, she could be your help me. I am here, I'm your provider, but you need a helper still yeah. on earth. And just that's just awesome to understand that, to understand that and move forward with it. So that's a big transition that I had. And basically I'm getting married soon. Yeah. So that's another transition I'm looking at. So from looking at those transitions that's coming in the future, you can tell life is coming at me fast. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And income, as my pastor always says, money's not everything, but it's up there with oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so just by doing Uber and Lyft, I start I fall into I fall into, I fell into real estate basically, just the love of real estate and uh and not the love of money for it, but the love of real estate, like building stuff and yeah. fixing stuff, solving people's problems. And I started learning basically how to do real estate, not as a, a realtor, but as an investor. Yeah. So that's my next transition would be to full-time go in real estate and also uh, content creating. And I have some other businesses that I have on the side also that I am uh, starting also, but not in that, it became a body blow when I started working on those things. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, I got to put those aside a little bit or calm it down or maybe r read a book about that instead of try to build it. You know what I'm saying? Because it became a body blow on me. It just like started wearing me down again. Yeah. So, yeah. So my, my next transition is to go full time. And like you said earlier, I like I love what you said earlier. You said it's where you headed. That's how you should already start acting and setting your schedule. Yeah. And literally, that's literally how my schedule is set now, to go full-time into real estate and content creating and still have time to serve, to hang out, have fun. Yeah. It's like my priorities start to become straight as I start managing my time because it should be your, uh, of course, God, which is your faith, family, and then friends, and then fun stuff, right? Yeah. And then fitness also. Fitness has to be included, which and is like health. Your health. You know yes. Yeah, I was trying to rhyme everything with the F. Okay. But that's good too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just you gotta take care of yourself. That's a good. That's a good way to look at your schedule. Are you taking care of yourself during those schedules? Like, are you healthy and are you happy? You know. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay guys, we made this episode a little longer like you guys requested. Hopefully you really enjoyed it. I hope you guys really do. We're really genuine with making this video. In the next 
video, which is gonna be part two of this, is like really good stuff that I'm really excited to show you guys. We talked about some really cool things, so that video is gonna be a part two, which will come out on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. But thank you guys again so much for watching. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed. I wanna hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below, so please leave a comment. And please stay tuned for the next episode because it's gonna be a really good one. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.